Okay, so uh, uh, good morning, everyone, and thanks for coming along um, to this short talk about biological recording in winter. Um, I'm Tammy Stratton, Conservation Officer with Montgomery Wildlife Trust, and I'm also a keen naturalist. Um, I'm also the county mammal recorder in my spare time, so I apologize now for the slight mammal bias in this talk. So Daryl Hardy uh, gave us a presentation this morning about the Green Connections Powys project. Um, that's the, the Powys Wildlife Trust project, which is working with people to take action to address the climate and biodiversity crisis. Um, surveying and recording is obviously an important part of that project and um, we can all take part whatever the season so hopefully um, give you some inspiration with this today. So many key naturalists go into hibernation in the winter like this adorable dormouse or take advantage of the quiet time to catch up with data entry or analysis however it can be beneficial for us to get outside during those short winter days, not only to record the overlooked wildlife, but also for our physical and mental well-being. Um, so what can we look for and record during the winter? I should say that this talk is way too short to cover how to identify all the plants, animals or fungi you might encounter during a winter walk. All I can do here is give you a flavour to get you started. To help you delve deeper, I've pulled together a document with sources of further information, um, and this can be found on the BIS website. I'll uh, put a link to that um, in the chat at the end of the talk. One benefit of winter can be the increased availability of soft substrates for registering footprints. Heading out at first light after a fall of snow overnight can be particularly rewarding and really nice, fun thing to do as well. This technique can be especially illuminating for recording our elusive mammal species. Here we have three examples in quite shallow snow on a rural road, making the, the registers quite clear there. And here are some examples of footprints in mud. When photographing field signs, a sense of scale is very helpful. Ideally have a ruler to hand, but a key, coin or even a finger can be used. And it's not just mud and snow which can register tracks either. You might have noticed there's something odd about the, the badger footprint there in the bottom right hand corner. Um, it's actually been registered in a cow pat. So keep your eyes peeled. Talking of poo, this is another field sign to look out for. The most distinctive is shown here. Badgers are the only UK mammal species to dig these dung pits, so it's quite distinctive and they become a lot more obvious in winter, um, are the easiest um, to identify field sign to confirm an active badger territory. And if you're walking alongside watercourses, it's always worth looking out for otter poo, um, known by mammalogists as spraint. It is deposited on prominent places like large rocks or under bridges. And do take a sniff. Um, a whiff of jasmine tea or a pleasant, slightly fishy smell will confirm the ID. You'll get strange looks for sniffing poo, but it's an important identification procedure for this type of field sign. Smell can also be useful sense when identifying fungi. When we're recording wildlife, it's useful to use all your senses. Mostly we look for things with our eyes, but keeping our ears open can also be rewarding. The obvious example for this is birdsong in the spring, of course, but there are sounds to listen out for in the winter too. In fact, it is a great time to start learning birdsong before the skies get too cluttered. Song thrush, robin and blackbird can all be heard singing during the winter. And it's not only singing birds to listen out for. During the day and even at night when birds often migrate, the calls of our winter visitors can be heard. And here we have two examples from the winter thrushes. First, we have the red wing, which is the species also illustrated. The very high pitch seep call there. And this is the field fair call. Some mammals can be heard too. 
So this is a common social um, vocalization from a gray squirrel. <laughs> And we've also got some fox calls here. So first of all, we have a bark, which is usually uttered by a dog fox, but not always. And then we have the scream of a vixen. We can use our sense of touch as well. For example, it is possible to identify the presence of some mammals by examining gnawed hazelnuts. By sticking your little finger into the hole and twirling it around, you can feel how smooth the inner surface is on the hazel dormouse gnawed nut, compared to the very ridge surface of that gnawed by the bank bowl. The two apodemus mice, that's the wood mouse and the yellowneck mouse, also leave a ridged inner surface, but unlike the bank bowl, there are marks on the outer surface of the nut. Another very obvious mammal sign um, during the winter are molehills. Wherever you see them, you can recall the presence of their creator, the humble mole. At this point, you may be thinking that we surely don't want records of things like this. And the answer is an emphatic yes. Common wildlife may not be common forever, as we've seen with many species. So it's important for us to regularly record everything so we have the best understanding of the current range. If we don't know a species is there or not, we cannot be ready to take action. Obviously, winter's also a great time to get into birds. As well as starting to recognize bird song, you can liven up those winter days with some bird watching. You can obviously do this from the comfort of your own home, and there are some great citizen science projects you can get involved with to record your garden birds. Heading out to a wetland site can be very rewarding. These places form a magnet for many visible bird species throughout the winter and you never know what you might spot. Like this bittern, which had a protracted stay a few winters ago at Llinquidid in Us Nature Reserve in Welshpool, providing very confiding views right by the bird hide. So far, we've only considered birds and mammals, but there are, of course, many other species we can look out for and record in the winter. Although autumn is undoubtedly the best time for fungi, there are some species which have obvious fruiting bodies year round and become more obvious in winter after all the leaves have dropped from the trees and shrubs. And whilst fungi can be a challenging group to identify, there are some species which are quite distinctive, such as these illustrated here. Similarly, when it comes to the weird and wonderful world of galls and leaf mines, autumn is no doubt the most varied and productive season. But head out into the leaf litter right now and there's still some delights to discover. There are many different species of moth and fly larvae which cause mines such as this one, but for obvious reasons they really stand out right now and there are resources to help you identify the culprit. If you know what the plant species is, then you are one step closer to an ID. It's worth mentioning that these green island mines, as they are known, are a result of the moth larvae keeping the tissue alive, chlorophyll and all, so that they can go on feeding. But it's not just these animals that can cause green islands on leaves. Infections by some fungi and bacteria do it as well, and for the same reason. In fact, even where larvae are present, it's apparently actually the bacteria within the, the larvae that are generally responsible for green islands. Another example of the wonderful diversities of nature. One species of mine which can be spotted throughout the winter is the holly leaf gall fly, Phytomyza illicus, which makes these distinctive marks on the evergreen leaves of holly. Some plants really stand out more in the winter and perhaps none more so than the very seasonal mistletoe which is actually pretty uncommon in Montgomeryshire, and I'm not sure about the rest of Powys, but certainly in the Montgomeryshire um, level. 
So you could really help fill out gaps in our knowledge by recording their locations. Throughout the winter, keep an eye open for flowers too. It can be surprising just how many different species there are in bloom. Taking part in the BSBI's New Year plant hunt is good fun, and you'll be surprised by just how many different flowers you'll spot. What if you really don't want to go outside? Well, the good news is that you can record wildlife in and around the house as well. Some species rely on our houses to make their homes, and that goes for some of the spiders you find in the house. So this is a warning. If you are a spider phobic, look away now. This is the cellar spider, Falcus phalangoides, which can be extremely common inside the house. It certainly is in my house. It's a spider sanctuary for them. Be sure to put that spot on the map by recording yours. Okay, spider phobics, it's safe again now. A number of moth species are active as adults during the winter, so check out your lit, window, lit windows at night for those which have been attracted. The Montgomeryshire Moth Group have a really helpful website which includes a section highlighting species in the area to spot each month, so do check it out. And then there are the hibernating insects, which could be hiding away in your outbuildings or even a sheltered house wall. As well as the Red Admiral and small tortoiseshell butterflies, there could be queen bees and wasps, ladybirds and moths such as these. Be careful not to wake them though. Another aspect of biological recording is that of making note of when seasonal happenings occur each year. Um, this is a study area known as phenology. In late winter, Examples of this would be uh, flowering hazel or blackthorn. Um, and there are actually many different plants and animals that you can record seasonality for all through the year. And you can now contribute to this data to the Wooden Trust Nature's Calendar. Um, this has been running for a very long time and they did put a hiatus on it for a short period, but it seems to be back up and running now. So do, do take part if that sort of thing interests you. If you fancy a real challenge, you can have a go at identifying trees without their leaves or explore the overlooked but fascinating world of lichens and bryophytes, bryophytes being mosses and liverworts. We were listening to a fascinating talk from Ray this morning about lichens, um, and this is um, a tree lung work that we have at the bottom here um, on one of the few sites in Montgomeryshire. Um, so that can be great fun as well if you really fancy a challenge. And if that's all too much and you really want to get into something which simply isn't around in winter, then take time to prepare. Read a book or books about your subject of interest, watch videos, and thanks to COVID there's plenty of choice there, and reach out to like-minded people or experts in the topic. With Christmas coming up, it's a good time to add some field guides to your wish list. Thank you very much for listening. We now have five minutes or so to tackle any questions you may have. So feel free to unmute yourself or we'll have a look at what might be in the chat box. Thanks, Tammy, that was great. I wasn't too scared of this spiders, by the way. Okay. <laughs> Never know. I have colleagues that just pictures of spiders freak them out. So I've learned to provide warnings to people. Fair enough. Right, I've put the link to the um, document in the chat for everyone. Um, I see it's, is that, there seems to be a chat for the, the whole forum. Is that right, Brad? I think, oh, it, it does funny things this, the, with the breakout rooms. So I'm, I'm not sure if it goes into something that everybody can see um, or just everybody in our current room even though it looks it looks like it's contiguous but i don't it know does. if it is yeah, yeah. um because because when i look at the number of participants it only says eight at the yes. moment yeah yeah so. <laughs> <laughs> so but we'll, we'll sort that out we I, I think we can save all the chats though 
Um, so when we put the, the video back together and send everything out and any questions and stuff, we can send that out to people so they got all of it, even though it might be separate. That's great. Does anybody have any questions they want to ask? I can't see anything in the chat. I, I just, well, kind of a comment. One of the things that, that I'm glad you said that, that's really important is, is recording common things. Um, cause we cut off and forget about that. Um, so there's lots of things that are under recorded or I always joke that there's only eight rats in the whole of the uh, Brecken beacons. <laughs> yes. When I took over as a mammal recorder in the early 2000s, there were about a dozen rabbit records for Montgomeryshire. Um, which is obviously ridiculous. And I've always used it in talks to show people how important it is to record the common wildlife. Mm. Well, yeah. ash dieback is a really good example of that, isn't it? You know, something that yes. we taken for granted that you know, suddenly is, is disappearing right in front of our eyes. Yeah. Now, does anyone have um, any other things that they like to record in winter that I might have missed or any other additional recommendations for um for anybody else who's on the on the breakout room hi it's, it's laura here i think thanks for the talk um i just wanted to mention that there's um a new book coming out on micromoth field um signs uh, people might have already seen the ben sales book that goes through the months of the year he's just releasing a second edition next month oh, so that fun. might be a, a good resource for people to use keep them busy over the winter so that's be great more, laura do you know yeah. when it's coming out uh i think it's on sale through the N nhbs in december just a good christmas, christmas present <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fantastic great thank you okay any more for any more i think we got about a minute and a half before it bounces us back into the the central room Last chance. <laughs> um, I can't, I'm just looking for it now and I cannot remember for the life of me the organisation that does it. And I, do, I imagine they do it for other animals, but seabirds, you can go online, you know, if it's a horrible day and you basically get given an image and you have to record if you see eggs or birds and stuff like that. And they're like on really remote islands. So it's quite interesting, even just spending like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, is that like helping out the researchers? But for the life of me, I can't find out who it is that runs it but i'm sure it's somewhere online but it's it's quite a fun activity to do um yeah it's quite good thanks lottie that's a really good suggestion um and there's also um mammal web where you can sign up to look at camera chat footage and help um identify what species have been captured so that's a, that's a really good point okay folks um we've got 25 seconds left, I think. <laughs> I'm going to stop.